Before I start, I just want to um, go on ahead and pray. Amen. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for bringing us all here together, Lord Jesus. I thank you and I praise you for speaking through me, Lord Jesus. I thank you and I praise you for decreasing me and increasing you and me, Lord Jesus, and using me as your vessel, Lord Jesus, only saying the things that you want me to say for your people, Lord Jesus. I just thank you and I praise you for our pastor and our first lady who thinks enough of me to put me up before your people, Lord Jesus. And I just thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So like what Pastor was just saying, I guess what prompted this is um, I subscribe to a lot of science channels on YouTube. And so I, I watch videos and stuff um, all day. But um, one of the things that, <laughs> one of the things that really stand out to me that I really like watching are videos about the body. And I thought it was really interesting that in the word, we're often compared to the human body. We're called the body of Christ, like Pastor was saying. Um, so what does being in the body of Christ mean? And you guys could answer this question. You can just shout it out if you have an idea. What does being in the body of Christ mean? Being a part of the whole. Being a part of a whole, yes, that's exactly right. Anybody else have anything? Um, being active, helping the, the body to function properly. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. So being a part of the body of Christ is basically being a part of a whole. There are smaller parts that make up the larger body. So um, why do you think God uses the body as a comparison? And the reason why he does that is because they work exactly the same. The body of Christ works exactly the same way that our human bodies do. So we're going to turn very quickly to Ephesians 4. And while you're getting that... Um, it's just really important for us to be, you know, to have a spirit, a spirit of unity and oneness. And that's what this, this chapter is going to emphasize. So Ephesians 4 and 1, it reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So here we have a comparison of, of you know, the church being the body of Christ. And what we want to focus on is the second verse really quickly. It says, with lowliness and meekness. Now we all know what meekness means. Meekness means having strength under, under control, but lowliness, that can be something that's misconstrued, and I want, to, I want us to really understand what that means. So lowliness doesn't mean that we walk around thinking, oh, woe is me, I'm a low-down, dirty wretch. That's not what it means. It actually means exactly what one of our young, our young prophets said last week. Minister Corey, he said that when God gives you gifts, you don't let those gifts go to your head. So that's what lowliness means. We never want to get to the point where, we, where we're being puffed up or we think that we're better than one another or we, we, you know, because we have some sort of position that, that we're greater than the other person. Um, I've been in this, this ministry since its conception, and um, pastor says I, I know a lot of things, um, which, is, which, is, which is true. I do, I do know some things, but from being in this ministry, um, and from life in general, I've, I've seen people come in and it's, it's clear that they, that they don't know things and they know that they don't know, which is good. That's a good thing when you are able to say there are things that I don't know. But then, you know, pastor may preach a 30 minute sermon and it's so on point that they believe they got all of his 30 years of teaching Amen. in that 30 minute sermon Amen. and and that's not how it works and that's when it becomes dangerous when you get to the point where you're not you're not okay with with not knowing everything but you think you know it all that is a, a major a major major problem and normally pastor and first lady will sit down and have a talk with the person and then they'll understand that there's a lot of things that they don't know and even more things that they don't know that they don't know. Amen. And so that's, and, and the reason why I say all this um, is to say, when we get to the point where we think we know it all, then it becomes about me, look at me, look at what I'm doing. You, you straddle the fence of becoming a false prophet. Amen. And in the body of Christ, being a false prophet is the worst thing that you can be. Amen. 
because not only do you direct people to yourself and you reproduce yourself, um, you, you direct them away from God and you build a bunch of nothingness that destroys the body. Amen. And wow. what that is equivalent to, a false prophet, that is 100% equivalent to cancer in the human body. Okay. Um, if, you think about, if you think about what cancer is, I'm just going to explain very briefly. But what cancer is, every, every cell in our bodies has DNA, right? Amen. DNA basically is a, is a list of instructions on what to do. That's right. Okay. That's right. And all of our cells in our body follows that list of instruction. But cancer cells are rebellious. They have the instructions, but they refuse to follow those instructions. Okay. And because they refuse to follow those instructions, they, be, they begin to reproduce themselves at a rate that is harmful for the body. And that's what that's all cancer is, is when you have rebellious cells that reproduce at a rate that they're not supposed to. And that's why tumors and things grow, because they're reproducing themselves. So not only do these cells reproduce themselves and infect other tissues, they, they get the cells around them to become cancer cells as well. Not only do they do that, but they leak out of the tissue and go into other places of the body to destroy that as well. So these cancer cells is really like a false prophet that comes in and they say, it's all about me. It's all about me, me, me. I'm going to reproduce myself. I'm not going to try to um, duplicate or have my pastor spirit. That's not what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to come in. I'm going to reproduce myself and I'm going to attach myself to people and be, make them become cancer cells as well. Right. And as soon as I've destroyed this particular environment, I'm going to go to another group of people and do the same thing. That's exactly what cancer cells do. Right. So cancer is just rebellion in the body. That's all it is, 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 is rebellion in the body, because we all have instructions, but those cells just choose not to follow those instructions. Amen. And so um, it may not seem, I don't know if you guys know, there's a lot of different diseases that can happen, like viruses and bacteria that come in that wreak havoc. Um, it may not seem like that's such a bad thing. Oh, okay, so they're reproducing themselves. What's the big deal? No, it's the fact that they reproduce themselves and they no longer do what they're supposed to do. When you think about cancer cells and how, and how it kills the body, it doesn't kill the body because of some outside force. It doesn't kill the body because of some bacteria or you know, someone who's on the outside trying to do something and mess us up. That's not how it kills the body. It kills the body from, from the internal things, from, from, from getting together and, and being rebellious and nobody ends up doing what they're supposed to do. That's how the body fails. Because everybody has a specific, a specific role and a specific thing to do. And then we end up not doing those things. And the way, and, and it's crazy, the way that, that these cancer cells or, or people are able to continue going is that once enough cells come together, enough cancer cells come together, they form a tumor. And then they'll send out a signal that, that says, feed me, so blood vessels can start growing towards that cancer cell. Mm. And what happens is that when people start feeding it, it's a two-way street. The blood vessels that go in are able to take those cancer cells to other parts of the body. Wow. So when you begin feeding into people who are like all about me and don't understand the purpose of, of coming together and, and following instructions, ah. which is, the, which is the, the, the whole order of the universe, we think that everything happens haphazardly. Everything in this universe follows two golden rules, which is structure and order. That's what you have to have for everything to work. Every, every solar system, the planets revolve in the same direction. The ones who don't, because they, they started off going in different directions, the ones that don't get eliminated. So in everything, even, even up to the largest thing, our universe, um, it, every, everything falls along with, with order and structure. But then when you have, even to the cellular level, where the, where the cells don't follow the order and structure that they're supposed to, you see great damage. You see great damage in the body. And so when, when we allow those people to continue to talk and, and we feed into them instead of shutting it down, not only are we feeding them and making them grow and making them bigger, we're contaminating ourselves as well in the process. So that's why it's an important thing to not allow people to come and gossip to you and tell you, well, I don't think this is a good idea. Pastor will tell you something and you'll be like, well, I don't know about that and go tell somebody, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. I may not be with that all the way. And instead of you saying, 
I don't want to hear nothing about that. Uh, the pastor tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. You say, uh, yeah, I don't think that that's a good idea Amen. either. Yeah. All you're doing is contaminating yourself and you're growing that cancer in the, in the body. That's all you're doing. Wow. So we, want, we have to make sure we shut that down immediately. We have to shut that down immediately because we know that we're trying to build here. And we can't build like we're supposed to if we have rebellion running rapid in the body of Christ. We just can't do it. So before I go to my, um, my next point, I just want to really emphasize because um, in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the 12th chapter, it references it. I'm not going to go there because it's a, it's a long um, set of verses. I'm not going to get into reading, but it basically says that we can't, we can't ever get to the point where we think we're, we think we're more important than another member or, you know, we're, we're higher up or anything like that because we're really not. Even though, like I said, I've been in this ministry since its conception, that doesn't mean that I know a whole lot and I just have all the knowledge and wisdom. You know, Pastor and First Lady, if they, have, they have combined 60 years of ministry if you combine all their experiences. I mean, their experiences aren't identical. So First Lady has her 30 years and Pastor has his 30 years. And they still don't know everything there is to know. So how can we come in and, and begin to think that we know everything after being here for a couple of weeks or a couple of months? You know what I'm saying? Amen. So we have to really know that there are instructions within us, and we have to follow those instructions if we want everything to work smoothly. Yes. Amen. Because like I said, we are building, and we know what great things can happen if we come together as one and build. Yes. Like the scripture says in Ephesians 4, that we, are, um, what, we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And when we are able to exercise the God in us, we know amazing things can happen. So I'm going to just briefly turn. I know we, uh, we know this, this, this verse, but I'm going to turn to it anyway. Genesis 11 and 5. Because even throughout all the chaos that, that happens in the body, um, with the cancer cells mutating and not following any of the instructions, What's amazing about the body is that it has the ability to heal itself. So we don't have to be subjective. If we see something like that, we can stop it. Our bodies are, are made to stop it. We have certain cells that go after those cells that check them and say, you need to repair yourself. And if they don't listen, they eliminate those cells. And that's just what it is. That's how it goes. And so we have, we have the ability to heal ourselves even as the body of Christ. We can go to that person and let them know what you're doing is counterproductive. And we don't need that here in the body. We don't need cancer spreading. And if they can get with it, that's good. If they can't, they got to go someplace else. You know, because we're, we are building here. You guys see what we're doing around here. We are building and we can't let anything, especially internal things, hinder us. We have enough external forces that are trying to come in and stop. And we can't allow internal forces to be here. In Genesis 11 and 5, it says, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now think about that. That's extremely powerful. God says the people is one. He saw, he saw those people so together to the point where he couldn't. He didn't. He, he didn't differentiate individual people. He saw that as one people. This is one unit, one body. He's not going to say, "Oh, the fingers look really together today." No, he didn't even see it as, as as individual members or pieces. He saw it as one body. The people is one. And then he goes even further to say, "And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do." Not, not what they started to do, but what they have, uh, what they have imagined to do. When we come together as one, when we come together as one and really work together as the body of Christ, we can do everything that we imagine to do. Do you guys know imagine? Imagine is different than just doing. I can, I can imagine flying. Do you understand? Do you understand how, how, how there's no limit to what we can imagine to do when we come together as one? Woo! So, what I'm, I guess in closing, what I'm saying is we have to make sure that we don't allow any type of rebellion to, 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 to get in. Because we know what happens when people get, when people get cancer, you know, and then it, is, it, it goes unchecked. 
You know what I'm saying? So we don't want anything like that happening here because we know we are building something great. Amen. We want to continue to build something great. We want to continue to heal ourselves. And whenever we see any type of rebellion going on, we have to stop it right there. We can't feed into it because the moment you feed into it, you contaminate yourself. Remember that. Okay? So we have to make sure that we stay listening to the man and woman of God, listening to what they're saying and obeying what they say. So that we can continue to grow and build. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all I have for you. Yeah.